All right, today we are going to be talking about NFTs. What are they? How do they work? What the hell does it even stand for? We're going to get to all of that in just a second. This video is sponsored by our friends over at Giant Partners. All righty, so NFTs. So here's the thing about the digital space. Pretty much everything sounds as though it is some sort of bureaucratic government agency, but, but an NFT actually is a non-fungible token. They're putting the fun in non-fungible token. So what exactly is a non-fungible token? Well, fungibility in this iteration just means that one item is equal to another item. It's equivalent, they're interchangeable. So for example, Bitcoin is fungible because when you have a Bitcoin, that Bitcoin is interchangeable with any other Bitcoin. But when you have an NFT, it is a unique piece of intellectual property, and it is not, in fact, interchangeable with any other piece of intellectual property. It is unique, like a piece of art. So, in the same way that Nedvard Munk painting of a weird person screaming would be like, ah, would be non-fungible with the Mona Lisa, which I'm not even gonna attempt to draw. You can exchange value for each of these, but it's more like a piece of art. The best way to think of how you establish authenticity in an NFT is sort of like a certificate of authenticity you get when you buy a signed baseball or when you buy a piece of art, except here the blockchain gives you a unique code. The best way to understand what an NFT is is to think of a baseball card. What makes a baseball card actually worth money? It's just a piece of cardboard, right, with a picture on it. Now, theoretically, you could just create a knockoff piece of cardboard with the exact same information on it. Now, you could just print it out on your computer. You can make it look identical to the original Topps baseball card and it would not be worth what the original card is worth. And even the picture, right? I can get the picture online. I can look at the picture online. I could theoretically license the picture online and use it elsewhere. So what exactly makes that baseball card unique? And the answer is whatever people think is unique and of value is unique and of value, just like a piece of art, right? A piece of art is just the artist putting a bunch of paint on a canvas. What makes that inherently valuable? That everybody else thinks that it's valuable. This, by the way, should, in its most obvious state, reject the labor theory of value. And the Marxist and Ricardian labor theory of value suggests that you can tell the value of an object in some sort of objective way by looking at the amount of labor that went into the object. The subjective theory of value, which is proposed by the Viennese School of Economics, says no, value lies in what people think is valuable. Well, obviously, when you talk about a baseball card, when you talk about a piece of art, the latter is true because I could throw paint on a canvas the same way as Jackson Pollock, but my painting ain't gonna be worth two million bucks. So it is the vision of what the value of the object is worth that makes the object worth anything. Now, sometimes these items retain their value. Sometimes they do not. Now, a certain level of exclusivity provides for greater value. Scarcity in the market tends to provide for a greater value. If you've got a Honus Wagner baseball card, then that's worth a lot of money because there are not very many of them on planet Earth. If you are like me and you grew up with parents who grew up in the 1960s, all of them have stories about how they had baseball cards when they were kids. And then like idiots, they put them in the spokes of their bicycle wheels and now they're worth nothing. But if they'd kept their baseball cards, they would have been worth $100,000. Okay, so all of us, when we were kids in the 80s and 90s, we went out and we bought like full sets of tops. The problem is everybody had the same idea. So those baseball cards aren't worth very much money. You can have a Frank Thomas rookie card, might be worth a couple hundred bucks. It is not going to be worth hundreds of thousands of dollars the way a Mickey Mantle baseball card is going to be worth because of scarcity. But you can certainly have situations in which objects once have value and then lose the value when for whatever reason, people decide that they actually don't care about them. So for example, the most obvious example of something like this is of course, the Beanie Baby. If you are old enough to remember the 1990s, and now I'm dating myself, God, we're getting old here. If you remember the 1990s, Beanie Babies were a thing. I remember my grandmother buying Beanie Babies for the kids and then handing them out as though this was going to be their life savings. These Beanie Babies. Some of these things were going for like thousands of dollars. You had a rare Beanie Baby. She was like, don't take off the tag. If you take off the tag, the Beanie Baby loses its value. Well, now these are things that my kid plays with, my baby. I just gave, gave it to the baby, the baby chews on it because they're not worth anything. Right? Beanie Babies didn't retain their value because nobody thought the Beanie Babies were valuable anymore. The only thing that separates baseball cards from Beanie Babies is a lot more people like baseball than like Beanie Babies. So what does this mean? To me, it means that certain NFTs, certain non-fungible tokens, will retain value over time, but only if they remain artistically durable, only if people continue to care about them. We're gonna get to more about NFTs in just one second. First, I wanna tell you about our friends over at Giant Partners. Now, don't hit fast forward. I'm gonna tell you a little bit about the origins of Daily Wire. It started in a pool house, but the thing that we knew is that we needed to base our company's growth on data. We needed marketing. These were things that we focused on as a company, and thank God has been very successful. Well, here's the thing. Every company strives to have unique values and a long-lasting impact. It's time to position your company as an industry leader, create buzz, attract new customers, and generate consistent revenue. Giant Partners is here to help you do it. They're America's number one data-driven marketing agency. 
Giant Partners operates in the business-to-business space, offering a variety of business marketing solutions like database marketing, brand development, web design, SEO, lead generation, digital marketing services, as well as ad placement. That's just to name a few of the things they do. Whether you own a small family business or handle millions of bucks in revenue every year, Giant Partners can help you get to the next level. Their marketing strategies are research-driven. They're equipped with 20 years of data experience. Don't take my word for it. Their largest customers include BMW, Ohio State University, 3M, Ethan Allen. Head on over to giantpartners.com right now to get your business set up today. Now, NFTs can be anything. They don't actually have to be a piece of art. So, for example, Jack Dorsey, that douchebag, his first tweet from his cave in Malaysia where he's being bitten up by mosquitoes. He tweeted out when he first set up Twitter. This would have been March 21st, 2006, just setting up my Twitter. So this tweet went for like 2.9 million in Ethereum. So theoretically, you could have a situation in which somebody was paying for a valueless tweet with a valueless piece of currency. But in reality, at least right now, Ethereum's worth some money. And so somebody paid $2.9 million for this tweet. Now, what does that mean? It doesn't mean that they have a license to reproduce the tweet, just like they don't have a license to reproduce the baseball card or to start producing Beanie Babies. It doesn't mean that they are the exclusive owner of the tweet in the sense that Jack Dorsey has to take down the tweet and just give it to them. All it means is that people now recognize, thanks to blockchain technology, that this is the original version of the tweet. Ooh, Uh, but you think, oh, that's stupid. It's a digital asset. I can just reproduce it. I can just screen cap it, go back on his account, put it on. Yeah, you can do the same thing with the baseball card. Right, you could do the exact same thing with the Mona Lisa. You could, you get a print of the Mona Lisa today. You could print it out and you could put it on your wall. Would it be the Mona Lisa? No. And if you say, well, you know, that's just because when you're talking about the Mona Lisa, you know, you're talking about the artist having actually put his hands on the paintbrush. I mean, that is a distinction, but it is a distinction without a difference because again, baseball cards were mass produced and still hold their value. It doesn't have to actually be signed by Mickey Mantle. It's just produced by the Topps company. And so some of the prices on these things are just exorbitant and astounding. So for example, this thing, I don't even know what this is. This is some sort of collage. This thing, the original rights to this thing, and again, not the right to reproduce it or the right to distribute it, just the rights to the original digital piece of artwork. $69 million. So for $69 million via Christie's. No. Nice. I guess that what you do is you like put it on a on a giant, you project it on like a giant screen in your house or something, I guess. To me, the question is gonna remain the durability of this. Maybe this is more durable than, for example, this Lindsay Lohan piece of magnificent art. I mean, look at that. This is that Lindsay Lohan made this herself. So Lindsay Lohan, aside from being an absolutely stellar human with a ton of artistic talent, uh, she made this thing, which is Bitcoin to the moon. So apparently this sold for like tens of thousands of dollars to some sucker, because I, I, don't, I don't think there's gonna be a lot of artistic durability to Lindsay Lohan pieces with Herbie the Love Bug. Now, listen, I can be as puzzled as I want to be, but somehow Lil Nas X has the number one song in the country. So people obviously have very different cultural tastes from my own. Some people just like horse packaged as art. But, you know, still, I understand why the normal person would look at this and wonder why this is worth money. But then again, go look at a Rothko painting. I mean, why is that worth any money? That's, that's pretty much my, my son's construction paper cutouts put on a piece of art and then just sold for millions of dollars. So you can't question that, that some people put value in art. The good news is that this means that the subjective theory of value is true which is good because it means that you can't have actually a government assigning value to particular objects on the basis of some sort of crazy algorithm or something that's always going to fail. The bad news is, you know, people's bad taste sometimes is rewarded with millions and millions of dollars. So there's been talk about fraud and security when it comes to things like NFTs. How do you guarantee that nobody can actually duplicate it? Well, number one, it is protected by blockchain using the same sort of technology as Bitcoin. Also, fraud exists in the art world. Every so often, you'll hear a story where there was a forgery of a great piece of art and it was sold for millions of dollars and only later did somebody find out it was a forgery. Obviously, easier to knock off a digital image, which can be reproduced at will. Harder to replicate the blockchain that actually establishes its authenticity, however. So do these things actually have tangible value? I mean, the answer is yes, in the same way that your bank account has tangible value. You don't actually have a stockpile of gold in your house. You don't actually have a stack of dollars in your house. You don't even have a stack of dollars at the bank. These are all numbers on a piece of paper. We live in a digital world. NFTs are just a reflection of the fact that we live in a digital world and that people put value in digital assets in the same way that they put value in tangible physical assets. So in the end, are NFTs here to stay? I mean, if the digital world is here to stay, NFTs are here to stay. The question is whether we are in an NFT bubble. And that certainly could be the case. When you got stuff like this going for almost a million bucks, that seems like an NFT bubble to me. The other question I have to ask myself is when do I just convert half of the stuff I've done online to NFTs and make a bit of quick cash? I have to think about that. Here, for example, is the code on Lindsay Lohan and this magnificent piece of art. I mean, look at that. It's just spectacular. Look at that. I mean, that is 
That is what I'd want to carry around in my wallet.